This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! We continued walking through the festival of Mion in the front. Now we looked like a family of six. It had some intensity to it. I'm just glad there's another dude here. <laughs> okay, tone it down a little bit. Tomotake-san was a bit surprised, but to us it was just the same as always. Regardless of how terrible a penalty it was. You can't just say that if you're out, she just don't lose, you'll be fine! Rena was also brimming with determination. She didn't have any intention of losing. I tussled Rena's hair just to lighten the mood. She giggled to hide her embarrassment. Tomotake san whispered that to nobody in particular. At that moment, we heard an old man call out in a strong voice. Look over, looking over, I realized it was the man Mion had greeted right before the festival. <laughs> you could put it in a different way. <laughs> His stall was a shooting gallery. It was the usual setup where you had to knock down the prize that you wanted with a cork gun. Ooh! Everybody shouted their agreement. There was no need to consider how to win, since the condition for victory was simply size. The biggest prize at the stall? It went without question. It was that one, wasn't it? Um... I'm sorry, does- is there a real gun that we can win? I'm getting the real gun! Screw the teddy bear! <laughs> I want that 9mm! <laughs> Rena was gazing loneliness at a large stuffed animal. It was intentionally placed on an unsteady platform, so it was impossible to get if you hit the right spot. <laughs> That's true, DX makes amazing fan art. Also, that frog bag is also bigger. <laughs> Derpy Frog definitely looks like a good prize. I, w I want the gun, though. <laughs> or which, uh, do you mean Derpy Frog on the right, or the frog with the Pac-Man on the bag? Whatever prizes do we have? We've got another Derpy Teddy Bear. We've got the, oh, we got the weird, like, bouncy cat thing that we found in Pikmin 2. We've got some dolls, some knickknacks and doodads. We've got a slot machine, a lava lamp, some various potions, woodland mushrooms, a tank. For oh no, I want the tank. I want the tank. The intent analysis has already begun. <laughs> In this club, you'll get eaten alive if you don't come prepared. Everything hinges on what plan you can come up with before the main event. At some point, a large crowd had gathered around us making a big fuss. There was this much of a following for our club's infamous event. Bear's not the biggest fiend! There's a tank available! It's true. Tomotake-san's take on the situation was pretty good. He gets what our club is about. Everyone picks rock! I choose tank. Tank beats everything. After a couple of matches, it ended with Mion being first. When the shooting range guy handed her a rifle, Mion looked at it over intense intently. She didn't forget to check the cork bullet either. Okay. Mion raised her gun in one swift motion. It was completely different from her careful inspection. She was shooting from the hip! Fire! Reload. Fire! Reload! 
Fire! Flop. Flop, flop. Three candy boxes fell, one after the other. A big haul! Pretty good, Mion. The crowd paused in a moment of awe and then erupted in cheers. <laughs> Tomatage-san was at a loss of words after seeing such shooting prowess. Her accuracy was incredible. Her choice of targets wasn't bad either. The three Miona had gone after were fairly large and pretty easy to knock over. They were all targets with a very high return on investment. Next was Satoko. The rifle looked a bit big for her little body, but or for her life body, but it didn't seem like she had any problem with the weight. You mean the tank, right? She proclaimed that she was going after the teddy bear. Damn, Satoko, such a bold move! <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That, that's the way to do it. <laughs> Bribe a worker. Satoko was the opposite of Mion. She aimed for the target quite carefully and squeezed the trigger. The first two bullets struck the bear in the torso, but it only shifted a bit. You need to aim higher towards the head or it won't work! Satoko's third bullet wasn't aimed at the bear, but at the cotton candy box below its arm. Well, you admit defeat, and I appreciate that. She went boldly after the big catch, but since she switched over to less impressive prey at the last second, the crowd can only give a strained laugh. Were they laughing because she lacked the courage? These fools know nothing. The palm of Mion's outstretched hand went poof as it tapped down lightly on Satoko. She appeared to just be taking hot air, talking hot air, but she, this was actually completely calculated. Damn that Satoko. Just to avoid being in last place, she dared to switch over to an easy target. Without shame or honor. Magnificent. Rena was up next. She couldn't hit the broad side of a barn as regular Rena, but she said that bear was cute. <laughs> she gets the bear, the gun, and the tank. She wins. It's Rena, you know. It's Rena and Ryugu, you know. If it was up to the, it was if it was to get that teddy bear. Tomotake is on wheeled around to see what all the commotion the spectators were making was about. It, if it was to get that bear, she'd be able to shoot through a pinhole. The one known as Ren and Ryugu could do it. <laughs> Don't shoot someone else by accident. Rena couldn't hide her excitement over the bear's slow rocking. Now Rena couldn't lose. <laughs> Another big cheer! Rena's bullet hit the bear's forehead again. Not enough. The bear seemed to wobble more than before. What you gotta do is you gotta shoot the bear in the forehead, and then when it leans back, you gotta shoot it again so it leans back more, and then shoot it again, and then it'll fall. Or maybe it's just rigged and you can't get it. While Tomotake-san was just as excited as the crowd, Rika-chan's analysis was not swayed by emotion. If Rena had ten more shots, then she should, she could surely knock it over. But with just one more, no matter how you looked at it, no go. The crowd let out a dejected groan. Was that a groan? All right, good night, DX. Thanks for joining in, and yeah, I'll be finishing up pretty quickly. I'm trying to get to the end of the festival, though. She had it shot it right through the forehead three times. 
It was a bit late, but they gave her a good round of applause for the attempt. She could, should be praised for her valor, but she had no trophies to show for it. Then at that moment, the old man flicked one of the candy boxes with his finger and handed it to Rena. Oh, that's nice. Well, that was polite of him. There was another shower of applause. Rena turned bright red and pulled her back, <laughs> back, pulled her back over to us by her hand. It was easy to see that it only needed a little more to be knocked over. Rena had done quite a lot for me. I still needed to pay her back for that delicious picnic. What? Tomatake-san had stolen the words right out of my mouth! <laughs> Damn you, old man Tomatake! Stealing the good parts for yourself! <laughs> A small hand stretched over and fell gently on my hand just before I was overcome with frustration. Can you read my mind, Rika? Tomatake-san carefully studied the bear. Setting his sights, he shouldered the rifle while holding the other two shots in his hand. The time between the shots was short. It was meaningless to shoot again once it had stopped shaking. So Tomotake-san was relying on rapid fire to win the battle. Yes, that's how you have to do it. It was visibly wobbling much more than it ever had before. But that was all. It still didn't fall over. You gotta shoot the gun into the bear. All of Rena's momentary expectation from watching it sway violently turned into a dejected sigh. Mm. <laughs> That was it! It meant Tomotake-san had no spoils of war! I was the fifth shooter. I took the rifle from Tomotake-san. If I took the ruthless route, as Mion had suggested, then I'd go for something insignificant. Except... When I picked up the rifle, I definitely got a feeling from it. It was burning passion. Passed down to me by Tomotake-san. The regret of not being man enough to fell the bear that Rena wanted. Yes, that's right. If I didn't aim for the bear, then I wouldn't be a man. Plus, you gotta aim to win, not to just not lose. That's one of the rules of the club, right? Come on, the crowd went wild when they saw our conversation. Okay, tone it down a little bit. That's not me. That's not it, fine men of the crowd. If I didn't do this, then Rena might mug the old man running the stall on his way home. No, that's not it! That's not it at all! Why can't I just express my honest feelings? ケイチさんもどこを見せますのね。でも実際どうやってクマを落とす気ですの？レナやトミタケの玉で幾分傾きはしましたですが、難しいと思いますです。ケイチ君、もっと素早い連射力があれば一撃ごとの揺れにパワ
<laughs> Be a man! <laughs> Mion was able to figure out magnificently. Can I get a, like a uh, machine gun? That would be nice. Tomotake san went silent, peering at me and the bear through his lens. His photographer's blood predicted a miracle will occur. And then the crowd finally picked up on what I was planning. They let out a great cheer. They chanted my name, Keiichi! Rapid fire is the key. If I miss, all is for naught. After letting out a deep breath, I paused. Relax. No pressure. No pressure. Now! That moment, it felt like time itself had stopped. I felt like I could see the trajectory of the bullets. Hit it. And knock it down! The first shot hit the bear on its head. The second. The third. The bear swayed hard. And then... Oh yeah! But we should have gotten a CG for that. <laughs> Apparently the only people watching are all guys. The cheers began before the stuffed animal had even finished falling off the shelf. The guy caught it before it hit the ground and tossed it over to me. <laughs> you figured out the secret! You asked for free sniper rifles! <laughs> Arthur, use your head. There might be lurkers who are female, but probably not. <laughs> we showed Eggman the true superpower of teamwork. <laughs> also, Rika, you never shot at it. After holding up the teddy bear like it was a championship trophy, I handed it to Rena. <laughs> but Pelosi, <laughs> Rena, Rena, thinking she was never actually going to get it, was momentarily speechless. I pushed the stuffed animals towards her again. This time, she embraced and accepted it. CG! CG! We need a CG of her hugging the bear. We need it. Rena dove at me. CG, CG, talk on it. Mion told me a few days later that Rena kissed me, but I didn't realize it during all the excitement at the time. I remembered what I was trying to say to Tomotake-san earlier. There really isn't much of anything here. But there are lots of fiends you can't find anywhere else. I gained a lot from coming to, uh, from coming to Himanamizawa. Especially at that moment. The crowd's cheers echoed on and on. From the altar set up in front of the shrine, the drums sounded like with a booming echo. It was the finale of the festival. Both Rika-chan and Tomotake-san gave their farewells and disappeared into the crowd. Are we almost at the end of the festival scene? This is taking forever. Oh, 
Since she was carrying such a ridiculously large stuffed animal, she was being carried by the flow of people. Is this one of those bears that's like the size of the car you drove to the festival in? <laughs> wow! Savage. Before losing sight of Mion, I grabbed the back of Rena's collar. I didn't feel ashamed at all. Rena was ashamed enough for the both of us. I grabbed onto Rena's hand and dashed after Mion and the others. Holding hands? Too lewd. I hadn't realized Rena's hand was so delicate. Maybe she needed a bit more exercise and nutrition? That wasn't what I meant! Not at all! My ears burned. I tried to keep calm. I repeated the phrase, keep it together, Keiji Maibara, in my mind, but it didn't look like I would be able to pl anytime soon. I really didn't want Rena to see my face right then, so I pushed onwards, dragging her along without even looking back once. Here we go. There was already a huge group of people gathered at the altar in front of the shrine. The fire at the altar made it as bright as midday and just as hot. There was a pile of futons warded with sanctified rope in the front of the altar. Come to think of it, they did say that it was a festival where they did something with the cotton and futons. Satoko waved her hand in from the front row. Making our way through the mass of people, we reached the spot they'd saved. Instead of replying, Mion gave us a perverse grin. I appreciate the shipping, Mion. <sighs> Rana turned bright red, puffs of steam shooting out of her. I heard something splice through the air and turned around to see Mion on the ground with a welt on her face. Mion. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> the thunderous beat of the drum echoed, silencing the crowd. It was a solemn ritual. Rika-chan entered dressed as a shrine maiden, followed by the members of Municipal Cre Committee. The elders all looked at Rika-chan and clasped their hands in praise. The only thing allowed to disturb the profound silence was the flash from Tomotake-san's camera. Rika-chan has the biggest one. It's a big one. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I touched that tool when I played Harvest Moon 64. It was an awkward shape for a piece of farm equipment. Not uncommon for something used in rituals. After reciting a Shinto prayer, Rika-chan approached the pile of futons gathered at the altar. She swung the hoe skillfully, plowing it into the futons. Each and every little movement of this performance probably had to be done in a certain way. Without a doubt, this was a ritual. This is very weird. Rika-chan's face was already dripping with sweat. That hoe was probably really heavy. She staggered side to side with the momentum of each swing. Satoko looked on, silently lending her support. Satoko's hands were sweaty, and whenever Rika-chan started to sway a little, she held her breath. Rika-chan's <laughs> It's like the Master Sword, only some people can wield it. 
Or the keyboid. Nico a Kyoraka Janito, Damidamon. Savage! But kind of accurate. Mion drove her elbow into my side. With the thud of a big drum, Rika chan gave a solemn bow and descended from the altar. That triggered a round of generous applause. After the Shinto priests had raised up their cleansed futons like a portable altar, all the spectators stood up. Following after the priests, we all marched out at a moderate pace. They descended the shrine's giant stairs in a line. I didn't know that. The procession continued right up to the bank of the stream. A fire was soaked high, and it was bright as day here, too. People started crowding around it and clamoring. I wondered what was up. Maybe we'd get some holy wine? Red and white bean buns? <laughs> Oh man. Ah, but of course. They didn't call it the Watanagashi for nothing. I finally understood. The municipal committee members pulled out the cotton from inside the futons and balled it up like mochi, handing it out to people. Rena dove into the line and brought some out for me as well. Then we proceeded to the bank of the stream. She held the cotton in her right hand, and waving her hand as if to purify it, she touched it to her forehead, chest, navel, and both thighs. Uh, I don't know who Oyashiro-sama is, but I only worship the god of Israel. Oh, I don't trust this at all. This is probably some demonic stuff going on. Uh-huh. Probably not. <laughs> that sounded like a pretty frightening god. But, well, when in Rome. I was officially a resident of Hinamizawa now, after all. Doing as Rena showed me, I touched the cotton over myself three times. Thank you, Oyoshiro-sama. Thank you, Oyoshiro-sama. Thank you, Oyoshiro-sama. Yeah, this is definitely some weird spiritual stuff. Not really going for that. Together, Rena and I set our pieces of cotton afloat on the surface of the water. The flowers of cotton blooming in the water had sucked out all the bad illnesses from Hinamizawa and drifted off, disappearing into the distance. It was wonderful, like those floating lantern festivals I'd seen on TV. The best part, though, was this feeling like this rite of passage had made me a true resident of Hinamizawa. Mm-hmm. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. 